Busta says he's at his healthiest and he is showing off his transformation in the latest issue. Look at this of men's health, but he's getting there. It's a journey and he's committed to it. And now for the first time on daytime TV, he's opening up about it all. Please welcome the one and only Buster Rhymes. It's so good to see that smile. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think I told you we were on a phone and call and I said so many people can relate to this story. You had gone through great losses in your life, your manager, your father, and your life had changed in, in so many ways. I, I was curious, had you given yourself time to grieve through those losses when they happened, Buster? I think the, 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 the easiest way to deal with it for me, while being mindful to the effect of how I was showing the way I was affected by it to my family, was to kind of protect them from watching me and uh, and seeing me in my weak moments. Yeah. Were you masking with destructive behavior to not show that weakness? Did you find yourself trying to hide it through what you now see as destructive behavior? That's exactly what was, was happening. I was actually running from dealing with, actually dealing with it, by trying to run from dealing with it. And a lot of that came with drowning myself in work, mm -hmm. which in a way I was really grateful for having the studio and, you know, just being the space of those four walls where, you know, you can actually control the environment and you can be your most brutally honest self and not have to worry about scrutiny. Can I pick up on something, Buster? You said that you said to control things. And I'd read that you said something like at the time, that you were exhibiting these destructive behavior things. You said you wanted to eat and drink and do whatever you wanted. That feeling of invincibility, is that what, what you were craving? I, I, don't, I wouldn't call it invincibility. I actually think it was my place of escape. Mm. Like, I, I, I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could be honest around my kids. I didn't feel like I could be honest around people that I was in business with, and I had the pressure of still having to function. The bills every 30 days doesn't go away because you're suffering loss of life. Was the weight gain affecting the ability to give the fans what they wanted and what you wanted to give them? I definitely did not let the weight impact the performance. Wow. But my appearance definitely affected the appeal mm -hmm. that I had. And I knew that was happening because I was starting to hear it. Wow, what did you hear? I think the real moments that were cutting deep was when I started to hear the conversations from my kids. The, 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 the younger one, before he graduated from high school, sometimes when I would come out of the bedroom in the morning, and I would put my hand out to give him a dap on the way to the bathroom or something. And he would walk past me and instead of slapping me on the hand, he was slapping me on the stomach. Mm. He didn't mean no harm intentionally, but it was becoming annoying to me. It was like him indirectly saying to me, yeah, I get rid of this gut pop. But a big moment happened um, on a night that you were out with your son. You had a music video out. You were celebrating the new music video. You were in the car ride home with Tazaya, and you fell asleep. And what did he say he heard and saw while you were sleeping in that car? So, confession. When I shot that video, there's a scene of me wearing all white with a head wrap. When I initially put that all white on, it showed how badly out of shape that I was on camera. So we went in the dressing room and they duct taped my stomach down. Oh my goodness. With electric duct tape. What was that like? I mean, was that a humiliating moment for you? Was it a hurtful? How do you process that? It was difficult. I think it was probably one of the most difficult reality checks in my life. Hmm. And this was prior to what I'm getting ready to get into about what you was asking that my With son Tazaya. saw. Yeah. 
By the way, I never shared this duct tape in my stomach down part with anyone in this planet. Oh. So we get past this, we shoot the video, we complete the video. We go to a club in LA to celebrate the success of the video shoot. Mm. So we drinking and we doing too much with the drinking. And uh, it was time to leave when I'm on our way home. My uh, security and my son was in the car. And then the process of driving home, I ended up falling asleep. At that time, not only was the weight an issue, but I definitely knew that I, I had developed sleep apnea. Okay. Um, when you have sleep apnea, you, you actually stop breathing at a certain point. So I ended up taking this inhale that was so big while I was sleeping and wasn't aware of none of this happening because I'm so deeply sleeping that it scared my son. Wow. And at this point, we finally pull up to the house and it took them about 15, 20 minutes for them to wake me up to get me oh to get goodness. into the house. So he thought that you, I mean, I can only imagine your son and how frightening that would be, hearing you take that, that, that breath and not knowing if this was something far more serious. Yeah, because they couldn't wake me up. So it was starting to look like maybe it was death happening. Oh my God. I was losing my voice frequently for like the last two and a half years and just wasn't telling anybody. So for, hold on, because that's, that's a, I mean, you make, People love you because of your voice, and you are a legend because of your voice. So for two years, you had been losing your voice, and you didn't know why. Well, I, I didn't know why. I just wasn't telling nobody why. Really? Because you're yeah, now, now so you're up to about three secrets, which is amazing. When I'm thinking about <laughs> all of this, you know, you have these two losses. You're masking them. You start destructive behavior of drinking and eating and working hard and maybe even becoming a workaholic here. And now you're telling me, in addition to all of that, you're hiding the thing that's made you a star, the thing that you said you wanted to do from your teenage years in Brooklyn, and you're losing it, and you're not telling everyone, and you know why. So you have a whole nother medical yes. issue, a medical issue that you were hiding. Yes. What was it like hearing that not only your voice, but your life was at stake? The next day, um, after my son experienced that moment with me, that was probably the most frightening moment for both of us. Mm -hmm. I had to go to the throat doctor because I had to actually travel to uh, Dubai to do a show that Friday. When that doctor saw what he saw, hmm. he immediately said, oh, my God, oh, my God, I have to send you to the emergency room at UCLA Medical, and I need you to get in this ambulance that I'm calling for you now. Wow. And I said, I'm, I need you to tell me what's going on. And he says, I need you to go to the emergency room now. And I said, stop saying that to me and tell me what's happening. So he says, these pallets have grown so big that it's now blocking 90% of your breathing passage. And if I send you home tonight and you catch a cold, the last 10% of your breathing passage can possibly be blocked by just a regular swelling of a gland, a sore throat. You just catching a regular cold and you can die tonight. Desire wrote this on social media. Warms my heart to see you happy and healthy. My future children need to be able to hug their grandpa and play with him in the future. Proud of you, champ. Wow. How's that feel? It's, it's a big deal. It is. It makes me feel. 
Oh, man. <laughs> You're going to make... I'm crying now. Listen, I said this is a new year. I wasn't going to cry on every episode. <laughs> but you know what? I'm just so proud of you and the kids that, you know, you did this for your children, your sons, and have those words written by him. I think, again, so many people will relate to.